Okay guys, Chris from JNS again and um, this is another uh, uh, another bit of footage from uh, track day at Donington Park I did with Focus Events. Uh, when was this? This was back uh, late August. Um, okay, yeah, I remember this. It was, a, it was the day when, was it Storm Hurricane Francis had, <laughs> had, had, had uh, attacked the UK and I rolled up uh, in the morning um, at, uh, I got to Donny for about uh, seven, just after seven o'clock, and the weather was horrific, guys. Absolutely. It was throwing it down, and the wind was really strong. Um, so, basically, I, I'm, I'm not one for wets, but, I mean, it was horrific weather anyway. Even the guys in wets didn't go out um, until later on, but they did get out in the morning. Um, I've, I've experienced wets in the past and they are phenomenal tyres and I encourage anyone who does a track day, if they can afford to get um, some wets, then get them on your bike and go out in the wet because they give an unbelievable amount of grip uh, in wet weather and you, you, until you experience it, you can't talk about it and, um, and, and you'll not, you'll not comprehend it. Um, but uh, if you do experience it, oh my God, it is phenomenal grip you get from those things. They are amazing. Um, so yeah, I encourage anyone to have a go on them. At least don't sit in the garage like an old, uh, like, um, an old man, like what I do right now. If it's wet, I don't bother anymore. Um, I mean, it is risky in the wet, but, um, and I'm, I'm not, you know, I've done my wet weather riding, it's fine. I don't need wet practice because uh, I'm not lucky enough or talented enough to, to race. So um, I don't bother anymore, but I have in the past and it is amazing. Um, so yeah, it managed to dry out. This was at about quarter to two in the afternoon, still grey, um, and it had only stopped raining about an hour before, but the wind was that strong. Um, it dried up, it dried up really quickly. So that was good news. Um, and I thought, right, well, we'll go out and see what happens. Um, the track is quite cold, but I still ra run the standard uh, standard tyre pressures. Um, again, running um, Dunlop slicks, uh, 35 in the front and 22 in the rear on the ZX10. That's the recommended pressures, and that's what I do. Uh, sometimes you drop you drop that one in the rear to 21, depending on what the track temperature is doing and and how the bike's feeling and how the tyre's performing. Um, but I'll talk to you some more about that in the future. But um, you can move those pressures around a little bit, but only only small increments. But the, the the most important thing is to check them every time you come in from a session. Just make sure you check them as soon as you get them on the stands ASAP before you've even taken your gloves and your helmet off. Your helmet off. Get to check your tire pressures um, with a nice, accurate uh, uh, tire pressure gauge, and make sure they haven't moved around, and you know where you're up to with them, and adjust them accordingly. Then throw your throw your warmers back on. Um, uh, Donington. I've done Donington quite a few times. Of course, it's pretty local. It's one of those tracks where you don't have to stay overnight to uh, to get to. So I can set out in the morning about half five ish, and I can get there for for seven o'clock without too much mither. Um, and uh, the in-laws live quite local to there. They're only twenty minutes away, so I get my tea thrown in as well for free if I call in there. So that's good news. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great circuit, uh, and I have run. This is the one with the loop in, with the Melbourne loop in. So it's the full circuit. I have run the one without the loop, um, but the loop is, you know, it it, 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 it. They added it on, and it was just a little add-on. And everyone, some people don't like it. They like it off, but for me, it's um, it, it's a good technical part of the loop. I quite enjoy doing the loop, so um, I do I do enjoy the circuit. Crane curves here that it feels like you're dropping off the first time you do it, it feels like you're dropping off the edge of the world as you go down this hill and they are so fast Craner is so fast unbelievably fast um, and it's great to go down and uh, uh, you'll if you ever experience it you'll you'll really enjoy them they're, they're phenomenal um, it runs up here uh, and if you uh, if you look at there's a plane there you go the, the East Midlands Airport isn't far away um, so you often get the planes taking off and they can be right over your head as you as you approach this is coppice the corner double apex right hander first apex there second one there uh, out onto the back straight it's blind as well coppice is so you you run up to it and you can't see where it is and you just sort of you just get a marker on the circuit somewhere because you know that apex is going to appear on the right hand side 
Um, but it's still, every time you go around it, it's still daunting because you can't see it until the last minute. So you just set a marker up and just hope that it's there. And nine times out of ten, guys, it is there. It does appear in front of you. But it's, um, it's a little bit different. There's the loop again. And... Uh, yeah, it's a bit different to do the loop and, and people attack that corner in, the, in a different way. This one is a little bit off camber. Um, you guys might have seen uh, Glenn Irwin slide off um, uh, the other week at, the, at Donington just there on that one because it is off camber and uh, he was pushing a little bit hard in the first first lap on cold tyres. But it is off camber there, you've got to be careful. Um, Redgate's a great corner, and but it does tighten up. It is quite tight and that comes up on you on the outside. That, uh, the outside on the left hand side comes up on you quite quickly and you're accelerating quite hard out of there and sometimes it can just catch out a little bit but going down these crane of curves is just phenomenal i just love it it's such a great feeling um uh but yeah this was a fairly <clears throat> it was a fairly good day now unfortunately you, you can see that the the track isn't particularly busy and it was because that most people had gone home and they'd they'd written the day off um uh, and for me, I'll, you know, if, I've, if I'm at a track day and I've paid my money and it's raining in the morning, I'll just sit in the garage and I'll sit and sit and sit and wait and pray and uh, hope that the sun comes out and it dries up so that at least, you know, by the afternoon you're going to get some sessions in. And this is what happened on this particular day, you know, by the afternoon I managed to get three sessions in and, um, you know, the track was pretty empty because most people had gone home or most people hadn't turned up because they knew the weather was going to be bad. But, but guys, you've got three sessions there, completely dry sessions that you missed out on. And when you're paying 180 quid, those three sessions are expensive sessions, you know. If you split it, divide it down to seven, you know, you're throwing a lot of money away there that you've missed out on. Um, uh, yeah, it was... Um, it, I, 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 I like the later sessions as well. What I tend to do is pace myself for the afternoon sessions because you do find you get a the the track is a little bit freer so uh most people you know they, they, they turn up they get all excited in the morning go for it and by just after it, they'll do two sessions after lunch and then oh, i'm gonna pack in now I'm, I'm i'm knackered you know so um it does take it out of you i've got to tell you you do need to be pretty fit to keep going and uh you should get you know around uh, eight laps in a in a twenty second uh, a twenty minute session. Um, the the days are split up into into seven sessions. You get four in the morning, break for lunch for an hour, and three in the afternoon. And so I tend to just pace myself in the morning a little bit and just not go too hard. Try and conserve some energy so that for the last sessions of the day, when especially the, the very last session you know most people have packed up early and you've got the track to yourself similar to this now you know um and it's such you know these circuits we've got in the uk they are phenomenal circuits and we're so lucky to have them and being a fairly small island they're, they're all fairly close together so we're well spoiled guys and uh you know if you've got the opportunity to ride these these circuits then get out there and ride them because uh, it's they they are amazing circuits um, and we're, we are really lucky to have them. There's a pit lane there, that could bike's going off into the pit lane entrance there, which is um, just on the left-hand side, so we approach it from the rear. Um, and then there's the, the start-finish. Um, uh, talking some more about the bike, I'd, um, I've recently changed the suspension uh, on the rear because it was, it was a little bit soft. I was running a 13 and a half spring on the rear, and it's a maximum a maximum shock I've got and uh, it was just getting a little bit soft for me and I'm unfortunately I'm a, a little bit with my airbag suit on and those airbag suits are quite heavy I'm a little bit heavier than what I would <laughs> what the 13 and a half spring could cope with so I've put a 1425 on and uh, it's improved it and firmed it up made it so much better um, and I get a lot better tyre wear because of that uh, of course if you're your suspension is working and it's set up properly it, it conserves your tires you'd be surprised um, there is such a fine line um, bit on the tweaks between tire and suspension you know that's your all right you've got your engine that powers the bike but then the next most important thing is your tires and your suspension um, because that's what's uh, governing the contact between you um, and the bike and the uh, and the track below you uh, so tyres and suspension are so, so important. Um, and if I've got a slight doubt that I've got maybe a little bit of a worn out tyre, 
I, d I don't bother risking it anymore. And I remember when he used to run, um, people used to give me hand-me-down hand slicks, you know, and um, uh, tyres that, you know, folk had, had used before and um, uh, but had thrown away because they're... Um, because you've not got the, you know, proper... Because they've, they've worn them out, basically, and the wear markers are, um, the wear markers are showing, uh, showing through and you've not got much tyre left, but um, uh, scrubs, they call them, and, and I remember running them. And when I wasn't going, you know, when I was first starting out, those scrubs were fantastic. It was great and they were cheap and everything was fantastic. But now, um, after having a couple of spills um, on, you know, uh, worn tyres, I'm thinking, you, you know, you learn by your mistakes. And if you've got a doubt in your mind that that tire is slightly worn or maybe worn on one side, um, every time you go around one particular corner where that you know that worn part of the tire is going to come into contact, you're going to be relying on it. It makes you go slower and it freaks your day out. So, you know, if you spent 180 quid on, on a day, listen, throw that tire away and put a, a new one on so that when you go out on that bike, psychologically, you're happy with everything that's on it and it's all set up and it's all perfect for you you've got plenty of tire wear left the suspension's great your pressures are great and you're happy with the bike and uh, that's the most important thing for me if there's something that's slightly not right it just freaks me out psychologically it's in the back of my mind and you know i just don't i can't ride the bike to the, to the best of my capability um even though that may be fairly poor um and uh you know, I don't enjoy the day as well either. I don't enjoy the time I'm on it because there's something nagging in the back of my mind. So uh, if you feel that tire's worn, change it. Just put a new one on. And, uh, you know, there's worse things you can spend money on, guys. You know, like utility bills and stuff like that. It's much more. You'll get much more enjoyment out of buying a set of slicks for three and a half hundred quid than you will paying a three and a half hundred quid gas bill. I assure you. Um, so, so there you are. That's what I said to the wife the other day. And she's like don't understand your thinking I said you know life's for living and it is and and this is my little bit of living that I'll do maybe once a month in the UK through the summer maybe twice a month if I'm dead lucky but um, most of the time I really enjoy the, the Spanish trips where you can get three and four sessions all in one you know in one um, in, in one week so you'll turn up on a Wednesday and your first day is a Thursday uh, so you go to Almeria with Focus and uh, you, your bike's all set up and you, you're there for the first day and away you go and then you leave the bike there, go home, uh, go back to the hotel, um, have the crack with the lads, have something to eat, go to sleep, wake up early in the morning, get back and there's your bike all set up again. Whereas you'll go here to Walton or to, to Donny and uh, you set up once, you just get into a rhythm by the afternoon and you've got to pack in, pack it all away and go home again and, and then wait till the following week to get on it. Sometimes you can get two days together at some of the UK circuits, which are great. But of course, with the COVID situations at the minute, um, I don't think they'll let anyone stay over or sleep over in the, uh, uh, in the circuits anyway. So um, it's not an ideal situation. But out in Spain, I just love those Spanish track days. I think they're great. Um, you just got to be prepared for them, pay your money. And it only works out about 90 quid a day. Um, you know, instead of coming to somewhere like Alton or, or, or Donny, which is a lot more expensive. Um, so it's well worth it guys and if you if you do you have done some UK track days just have a go at the Spanish ones book one uh, get out on it and enjoy it because you know it's uh, it's the closest thing to racing you'll ever do and if you're sat there on that super bike uh, running around on the roads and the and the motorways of the UK um, it isn't it isn't doing what it's capable of and you aren't riding it to its full capability so if you want to really experience that and appreciate the bike you've paid a lot of, awful lot of money for then uh, get out on a track day with it and uh, get some instruction take it easy um, but eventually you reach the point where you think wow this bike is phenomenal and you will really appreciate it um, so i can't recommend them enough um, uh, it was this was a, a a pretty good day in the end it turned out to be only got three sessions but um, you know, that's fair enough, you know, you, you make the most of what you've got, don't you? Um, and uh, this, the, following this guy here, um, uh, we're steady away with him and he's, um, uh, we, we're giving each other plenty of room, I'm following his lines and, uh, uh, and uh, I'm just, you know, taking it easy and making sure that, uh, 
you know we don't pass too close we don't get too close to each other you know these uh, we, we, we aren't quite as trusting as you can't trust the guys as much as you, the racers trust each other you know you see those fellas they're practically touching each other all the way around the circuit whereas um, it, it's, it's frowned upon to do that at, uh, at track days you know because there are you know we've got, there's some ex inexperienced guys out there and you want to keep yourself safe so every time you pass or every time you approach someone give them plenty of room um, because you don't know what's going to happen uh, in front of you there so it would be so easy for someone to have a little slide and before you know it you get caught up in their um, in their mistake so yeah make sure you give everyone plenty of room um, and remember it's not a race day but in, I know in, in our heads it is a race day but um, it's not a real race day so um, don't uh, you don't have to push it too hard just stay safe the important thing is to uh, load the bike back onto the van at the end of the day and it's intact you're intact and you've had a you've had a fantastic day that's really what it's all about isn't it um at redgate there go right over into the uh the pit lane line um it just helps you attack that that corner a little bit better um a couple of guys have told me that uh, while i've been at Donington. it just helps you hit Redgate and, and widens out the corner because your entry is that far over to the left hand side it's, uh, it makes the corner less sharp if you see what I mean um, it took me a little while to, to get my head around the angles of corners and entrance and exit points and, and which is the best for each corner it, it, but now I'm beginning to comprehend it um, when I started track day in 2009 so it's taken me a little while but I am old so uh, you're gonna have to bear with me. Um, copy says that's blind. There's blind coppers. First apex, and you don't know that apex is going to be there. But when you do hit it, it's like, oh, there it is. Thank God for that. It's almost relief. Then you've got to, straight away. You've got to concentrate on the next one. Um, something else I'm told is to at this point here, I'll be looking at that apex on the left. So as soon as you go into the exit. Um, as soon as you go into an entrance, um, before I even reach the entrance or, or the end of the breaking point, I'm looking at the next stage that I've got to get to. So at this point now, I'll be looking at the, where I'm going to clip the, 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 uh, the curb on the way out there. Um, you just have to look ahead, maybe 20, uh, 20 or 30 metres. So once you're in a corner, you need to look straight at the exit of that corner. So now I'm looking for the, for the, uh, for the apex of that corner there. and try and look ahead up the track all the time because the bike's moving quicker and the faster you go the more you need to look ahead so at this point now i'm looking at the i'm looking at on the right hand side to the um to the uh to the apex looking to find the apex and again looking ahead all the time because you know it, it you're going that quick that it creeps up on you so you've got to look make sure you look plenty ahead don't concentrate on the on the curb as you've hit it um so the last thing I want to do is look at that curve on the right now. I don't want to look at that. I'll be looking miles ahead at my exit and where I'm going to next. So um, bear that in mind as well. Keep looking ahead all the time. And you'll see a lot of guys in photos there. They're hanging off the bike and they're going around a right-hander, but their heads are turned uh, even more to the right because they're looking at the exit of that corner. They're not looking at where they are now and what's in front of them. They're looking 20, 30 20, 30 yards ahead at the exit of that corner because they're looking now from that point to get to that um, apex as quick and as smoothly as they possibly can. So that, you've just got to look where you're going each time. Um, just went over the rise down the back of uh, the back straight there where the bridge used to be, the Dunlop Bridge. Um, and it was such a windy day, I had to short shift because the, you'd always get the front wheel lift in there at that point. Um, and it was so windy and it was a crosswind. If the, the front wheel lifted, oh, it was a little bit scary. It pushed you right offline when it came back down again. So I was having to short shift a little bit on that particular day, basically because of the wind where, you know, to avoid the, the front wheel lifting. Um, but I'm thinking about getting a thumb brake and I think that's just gonna confuse me. I know it is, but I just like adding little bits and pieces at a time. Uh, so there's that one, all finished, all done. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I can pass on a little bit of my uh, not very much knowledge onto uh, Track Day Novices. <laughs>